It is Tuesday, February 7th, 2017. I'm Israel Anderson, and we need to talk. Well, please share, comment, like these podcasts if you find value in them. Uh, tag your friends, share it onto their wall. If you're not listening to this on the podcast feed, then I recommend you do so. If you're an iPhone user, Apple has got a podcast application built in. Just look on your phone for the application. It's got a purple icon called Podcast. If you're an Android user, I recommend you download Overcast. You can also download that for iPhone as well. It's probably the best podcatcher out there. And it will ask you for a URL. It'll ask you for an RSS feed. Uh, and here it is. IsraelAnderson.com slash pod. P-O-D. IsraelAnderson.com slash P-O-D. Now, some might require you to put the HTTP colon slash slash in first. Um, go ahead and do that if need be. Well, Betty DeVos had a very tough ride being nominated as Secretary of the Department of Education. A lot of these cabinet positions are dragging on. Well, today, finally, it made it through the Senate, but not without the President of the Senate. And so here's a little bit of um, information on how the Senate works. Not many people know about this kind of stuff because, well, you're not a politico. It's not that interesting, I guess. Um, and because it doesn't happen very often. But there is a president of the Senate. And the president of the Senate, they get to decide the casting, like the deciding vote, if a vote in the Senate ever is a draw or a tie. Today that occurred. 51 votes on either side. So what happens? Well, the president of the Senate gets to cast the deciding vote. Well, who is this president of the Senate? Well, it's actually the vice president of the United States, so Mike Pence. So Mike Pence uh, took a stroll uh, from the White House, where well, he didn't actually walk, but uh, he went over to, to the Senate and he cast the deciding vote. Now, I mean, it's obvious who he cast a vote for, um, for Betty. So Betty DeVos is now the Secretary of the Department of Education. Now, Betty has received a lot of flack in the media uh, from the left, lack of qualifications, doesn't know anything about education, yada, 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 yada. Some of that may be true. Um, it wasn't that important to me to really go and see if it was or not. So I haven't gone and done a fact check on that. I just don't see a point. I knew she was going to be nominated. So, um, but I'm not so sure that Betty is there to um, keep the status quo in the Department of Education. I think there's, that she's there to reform it. That's why she's there. Betty is a very... Uh, seasoned businesswoman and she's going to jump in there and start to reform this agency now a lot of libertarians they jumped in immediately and started saying well we should just get rid of the department of education well i think most conservatives agree with that and that's one area that we should understand one of many that we have very common ground libertarians and conservatives we share a lot of common ground I mean, I describe myself as a libertarian conservative. A conservative libertarian doesn't really matter. I'm more libertarian than conservative. Um, but we share so much common ground, and I see each side attacking the other, and we shouldn't. doesn't make much sense. Now, definitely there's going to be issues where uh, we're, we're not on the same page. Um, you know, the drug war and drug legalization is probably one of those hotbed issues. I'm absolutely for complete legalization of all drugs um, and uh, an absolute end to the drug war. Although more and more and more, far more conservatives these days are with us on this issue. Not because they're pro-drugs, not because we want anyone using drugs, but because we just know that government getting in the way of all that just doesn't work. We've got to start treating it like a vice, not a crime. Anyway, I'm getting a little off track. So a very famous libertarian uh, in the House of Representatives, his name is Thomas Massey, introduced a bill three hours after Betty was officially nominated or passed Senate hearings. And what did this bill say? Well, this bill is actually the image 
uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Facebook, and you see the image there I use in the background, um, that's the bill. It's a bill to end the Department of Education, and it's a really short bill. It's quite, quite awesome, really. So this bill, it simply says this. A bill to terminate the Department of Education. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. Section 1. Termination of the Department of Education. And it reads, The Department of Education shall terminate on December 31st, 2018. And that's it. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. The simplicity of libertarian government. Getting rid of entire departments that don't serve the public interest love it i love it i love it a lot so let's move on donald trump he met with the sheriffs today i watched uh, the video it's about half an hour you can find it on youtube and there's one particular thing that i want to draw attention to and remember if you listen to the last episode we talked about how um, I'm definitely a Trump supporter. I'm a 90% Trump supporter, but there's about 10% of issues that I definitely don't side with the president on. Uh, and this is one of them, civil asset forfeiture. And I got to tell you, this is one issue where it shouldn't really matter what side of the aisle you're on. You should be on the side of the people here. Democrats, should be on the side of the people. Uh, of course, they won't be if uh, conservatives jumped on this because all they do is oppose anything conservatives do. That's all the Democrats are about. They don't actually have any platform, any policy. It's, it's just oppose the Republicans, right? It's just the way they are. Um, but this civil asset forfeiture... Now, the problem isn't the fact that we can take the homes and cash and boats and cars of you know career criminals the problem is that we do it to people that have never been convicted of a crime police officers bust into someone's house uh, they find drugs and they steal their car and their boat and they their house and whatever assets they have and they don't get them back and they've basically got no recourse that's evil I mean, it's, it's, that's just evil. Now, if they were convicted of a crime and the courts allowed them to seize their property because it was from the gains of illegal activity, oh, okay, well, that's a different story. I'm not going to, you know, worry about that. I'm, I'm not going to make that an issue. But when it's people that have not been convicted of a crime, no, you, you can't take their property. There's too many rogue police in this country stopping motorists as they drive along the freeways, finding amounts of cash and deciding for their own selves that, oh, this is the money for that you've taken out of the bank to buy drugs with, and so we're, we're seizing it. This has happened to lovely old couples going on a trip to go and buy an, a new vehicle. I mean, many news stories of this kind have come out the last few years about this kind of a thing. So civil asset forfeiture has been massively abused. The problem was the president, who very obviously in this time that he was spending with these sheriffs, didn't have a clue at first what they were talking about. He thought they were talking about drugs. You could see his reaction when, you know, he said, well, what do you do with this stuff? And one of the sheriffs said, well, generally we'll, we'll break it all up and we'll share it among the police departments. And... Uh, <laughs> You you could see well like sheriff departments I guess you could see the the president looking at this like wait wait you, well, why are you doing that with the drugs yeah I don't you know he he wasn't quite understanding so I think we um we've got to take his comments with a pinch of salt but he did say that he's going to make it easy for the police to seize people's assets and the sheriffs were actually arguing that they should be allowed to take people's property before they've been convicted without a conviction now as much as i love these sheriffs i'm baffled by that i'm baffled that any grown adult in america the land of the free 
could sit there in front of the President of the United States and say, we should be allowed to take the property of people that we suspect of crimes but have not been convicted. Bullshit. Like, who died and made you God, pal? I'm sorry. I mean, no disrespect, but who the hell do you think you are? You have no right to take someone's property that has not been convicted in a court of law. I mean, that is, that is gross. I mean, it speaks so much to the moral character of the individual that would dare suggest such a thing. And I'm sure that the other sheriffs that did not agree with this kind of a thing were just keeping their mouths shut. But because it certainly wasn't, it was about three out of about 20 of them um, that were talking about this. But this, this idea that anybody could think that it's moral, that it's right, in a society ruled by the rule of law, that we could take the property of someone that had not been convicted of a crime is flatly absurd. And I don't support that. And I don't support the president saying that he wants to make that easy for them to do. Absolutely not. So another libertarian, Justin Amash, he immediately said that he was going to introduce a bill to end civil asset forfeiture without a conviction. I don't know how anyone could possibly vote against such a bill. So this is one of those times where I've said, we, we cannot carry the water for the president. We cannot carry the water for the president. I love... 90% of what Donald Trump is doing. He has my almost full support. But on issues like this, nah, -uh, sorry, no way. No, I mean, just, this, this shouldn't even be a topic of discussion. I mean, it really baffled me that here were these three sheriffs in front of the president talking about how they wanted to steal people's property. Forget it. Get your conviction and then ask the courts to be able to go and seize their property and if these people have been in legitimate, uh, if they've made gains through legitimate criminal activity, then by all means, take it um, and, and, you know, use it in, in ways that the court says is okay. But not with people that have never been convicted of a crime. I mean, that, cre that just creates a mess. So thank you, Justin Amash, and thank you, Thomas Massey, for your work in the house. And, and guys, this is why... This is why we need to build bridges with libertarians, right? Because they really are constitutional and they're looking out for the interests of the country. They want to keep this country free. So don't write us libertarians off as some wacko hippies, all right? We're not Democrats. We're not on the left. Now, unfortunately, the libertarian movement in the last few years has had a big injection of social justice warriors from the left, and that's disappointing, and that's our own struggle that we're dealing with right now amongst ourselves. But the average real libertarian, we're on your side on almost all the issues. We want to downsize government more than you do. So we can go back and say, you know, well, Ronald Reagan talked all about wanting to end the Department of Education. It never happened used to be the party platform, right? It used to say in the Department of Education. Now, who's introducing a bill to end the Department of Education? A Republican, technically. Thomas Massey is a Republican, but he's a Libertarian Republican. So take a look at what the, uh, what the Libertarians are doing. Okay, don't think that they're opposing you or they're not. I know that a lot of my listeners are conservatives. Don't think that the Libertarians are against you. They're not. Think about what they're, why they believe what they believe. We come to our, our policy uh, uh, because of rational, logical thought, and it would be wise to take a look at why we come to the conclusions we do. Um, but here's something else, just to reinforce all of this. Wouldn't it be great if we put a nominee into the EPA that wanted to really unwind some of it. Well, we got that. Isn't that fantastic? Wouldn't it be another step further, just like what happened with the Department of Education, if there was a Republican who introduced a bill to end the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, cough, cough, 
That'd be great too. Well, guess who did that today? Justin Amash. <laughs> so it's just amazing. So here's Justin um, standing up against civil asset forfeiture, and here he is wanting to end the EPA. Libertarians are on your side, conservatives. Don't write us off. We're here to help. Build bridges with us. And libertarians, you too. Build bridges with them. Stop thinking that both parties are the same. One party believes in capitalism. One party believes in socialism. Let's lean towards, well, I mean, you can't get more capitalist than us libertarians. So, absolutely fantastic. Love it. Thank you so much to these amazing libertarians in the Republican Party, Thomas Massey and Justin Amash. This episode is almost all about them and for good reason, because they're doing great work. Let's build bridges together. Let's recognize that we have a common enemy, the Democrats, socialism, communism, the destruction of capitalism. I mean, these people that want to destroy capitalism, um, they're our enemy. They're the ones that are trying to harm this nation that have been in power for far too long and have caused so much harm. Thankfully, not irreparable. Now's the time for us, libertarians and conservatives, to come together, start building bridges, linking arms together, and making sure we can push back what the Democrats have done to this nation over the last 50, 60 years. Let's do it. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. I really appreciate it. And don't forget, uh, share this, like this, leave a comment. Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I don't expect you to agree with me on everything. That's not why I do these shows. Okay. If I wanted to just build an audience of people, I, I, I could probably do that. But this is my show. Maybe you like it. If you do, share it around. And I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Take care now.